There is nothing more devastating than a fire in your home. It can be traumatic, both physically and mentally, and it can absolutely devastate a family's financial future. So today we're gonna to talk to a few folks who are gonna help us learn how to prevent a fire in our home, as well as how to save our families in the event the unthinkable happens. Here to give us some background on fires and its prevalence in the United States is Chief Derek Sawyer. He's with the Philadelphia Fire Department. And Chief, let me start off by asking you, Right now, today, how prevalent are fires in this country? I'll use Philadelphia as an example. We average about six fires a day. We realize that we're gonna have fires, but no one should ever die. And the way you deal with that is you make sure you educate the community about fire and life safety. You make sure they have working smoke alarms and sprinklers if possible. And then you have to have a home escape plan. Speaking to the public now, what are the things that they need to know in order to prevent these types of fires from happening? Unattended cooking, don't leave your food unattended while you're cooking. Candles, don't leave your candles mm -hmm. unattended. Portable heaters, the same thing. Space heaters need space. Right. Three feet around any space heater. But more importantly, after the prevention piece, we want you to have a means of getting out safely in a timely manner. Right now, we're gonna get a fire started up in here. And here to help us with the science behind fires is Vicki Pritchard. She's with the National Fire Sprinkler Association. And she's gonna tell us also a little bit about the differences between fires back a few years ago and fires now. So Vicki, there is a big difference between a fire that happened maybe 10, 20 years ago and one that might happen now. Absolutely, Michael. They often tell us that it's not your grandfather's fire, mm -hmm. that today's fires are faster, they burn hotter. And, and that is something that the scientists at Underwriters Laboratory have spent quite a bit of time researching, how the fire grows, how fast it grows. And what we know based upon their scientific research is that we now have three minutes or less wow. to escape from a house fire. It's the modern furnishing, the contents, the plastics, synthetics, they, they just go up so much faster than what we call legacy furniture, the furniture of our grandparents, if you will. What are some of the factors that go into starting fires? What, what should we be thinking about in terms of preventing that? Closing the door is one of the things that the scientists revealed in their research. If you close the door as you're leaving your house, you know we've always been taught to get out, stay out. When we open a window or a door, we're feeding the fire because we're giving it oxygen. All right, we're watching fires burn behind us. We have one room and then we have a second room. In the first room, tell us a little bit about the fire we see there, how it's spreading and how fast it's spreading and why. In the sprinkler room, you see the fire rising up through the curtain. And you notice as that curtain fire, you, you can actually see that it is a significant fire as those flames grow and, and make their way up the curtain. Now remember, the sprinkler is going to activate when the temperature reaches 155 degrees. So it is heat activated. The smoke is not setting it off, it's the heat. Fire sprinkler is activating, saving the day. You're thinking, oh my, that was a big fire. That's gonna be a lot of damage. But as you can see, minimal damage. Uh, dry off this sofa and, and you're, you're still in the home. You're sleeping here tonight. Which takes us to the second room where we see uh, a fire and it's spreading, but there's nothing to take it and bring it down. Right. As we're watching the fire grow in the non-sprinkled room, you will notice that the, the curtain uh, does trigger that and then it is going, moving onto the couch. And what you're seeing once this couch is, is involved is that fire grows exponentially. We're approaching flashover. So flashover is where everything in the room, as you can see now, is fully involved and ignited and no one survives flashover. You know, Chief Sawyer, I, I don't often say this, but I'm, I'm literally speechless. That might have been one of the scariest things I've ever seen in person from you know, the smoke to the flashpoint. It was just devastating. Tell, tell me about what we saw. So on one side, when you have a sprinkler room, you saw the fire extinguished within 30 seconds. Yeah. You have the same identical room on the other side without a sprinkler. And what you saw was the room in context become fully involved and flash over occur in about four minutes and 30 seconds. So what people don't realize is how fast the fire moves. That's right. In the past, you had 10, 15 minutes. Now, three minutes. Three minutes and you have to be out. Okay, so if you could speak to families, which I know you do, yes. what would you tell them about preventing these types of situations? One, you have to have a working smoke alarm. Two, if you get, can get your property sprinkled, get it sprinkled. Three, you have to have a home escape plan. You have to have that. You have to practice it, have a meeting place. Up until today, I did not have an escape plan. 
After today, trust me, I will. We're gonna put some resources up on our website to help you and your family get an emergency plan in place in case of fire. We'll also have some advice on how to keep your family safe. And please, don't put it off because the time is now to get fired up about fire safety.